Let's walk through a classic with Dr. Terror. Hello and welcome to Rotted Review of the Day. And today I'm going to be taking a look at the 1965 classic Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. Now, I came across this movie as a total happenstance. I remember I watched this VHS direct-to-video kind of dollar bin cheesy thing that Vincent Price did called Creepy Classics. I don't know if you can find it out there, but uh, if you can, I recommend it because he really does a great job of hamming it up in a way that only Vincent Price can. Uh, but essentially, he sat in a movie theater and he watched commercials, a bunch of trailers for B-movie, monster movie, 1950s, you know, giant Ant-Man kind of thing. And uh, it was a lot of fun to watch. And there was this segment that was peppered throughout of this disembodied hand crawling along the ground, crawling along somebody's desk, ultimately stalking this one particular guy. And I thought it was really well done. Something about it kind of captivated me. So I decided to look into, you know, many years after I saw Creepy Classics, I decided to look into where that came from. What was the source material for that disembodied hand segment? And I found out it was... Dr. Terror's House of Horrors, a movie I had never heard of before and that I had never obviously seen before if I've never heard of it. And so I looked into it and oh my goodness, the cast list really took me by surprise. Uh, Peter Cushing, Donald Sutherland, Christopher Lee, uh, Michael Gow, who you might know best for, uh, as Alfred in the Tim Burton, so on, uh, uh, Batman movies. It, it really was a phenomenal cast list. So I just watched it and I'm ready to deliver a spoiler-free review. I'm going to be doing a spoiler-filled, as always, deep dive discussion that will accompany this video. But if you haven't seen Dr. Terror's House of Horrors, this video is safe. No spoilers here. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get right into the categories here. Uh, five different categories, as always, worth up to 20 points each for a total possible score of 100 points. And the first is plot. Now... This is a compilation horror, and it's a compilation horror before they started becoming fairly popular. And I think because of that, there feels it feels like there's some missteps. And uh, I kind of want to get into specifically what they are in the deep dive, but I'm going to go over them in a spoiler-free way and just gloss over them as much as I can. But uh, the central uh, element that binds everything together is Peter Cushing plays Dr. Terror, who winds up in a train car with five other gentlemen. And it's a long journey. And he brings out, uh, or happens to bring out, a, a deck of tarot cards and introduces himself as, uh, you know, Dr. Uh, Terror. <clears throat> and that he can read people's fortunes and so on. So, bemused, at least most of them, they decide to take him up on it, and he goes into their particular futures and storylines. Uh, and each one is obviously a, you know, kind of Twilight Zone-esque uh, cautionary tale with supernatural elements to it, that kind of thing. Um, some of the segments I thought worked really well. Some of them I didn't think worked at all. Um, so I guess the best way to do this is to just kind of go over them without revealing any major spoilers. So I'll just go over them by the name that they were given in the credits. Uh, Werewolf is the first one. This one I thought was good on a suspense level. Uh, it was, it was fairly well written in how it was handling, uh, a lot of the plot line that it dealt with there. Uh, <clears throat> Creeping Vine... So, so, so. It didn't have a whole lot to offer, but what it did was interesting. I wish there was more of it. This is the problem with trying to cram five different uh, segments into a single movie of a compilation horror. Five is just a little bit too much, more often than not, and it tends to feel a little unbalanced. Uh, this one I wanted to see more of. The next one I wanted to see less of, and that was Voodoo. And... This one, I think, it, for me, it was more of a stylistic pet peeve than anything else. Um, there's a portion of television, movies, and even cartoons that when things started transitioning from the 1950s uh, over to the, uh, to the 60s and, uh, you know, further into the mid and late 60s, there was this general tone that started taking place of kind of... I don't know even how best to describe it, but almost like, um, you know, 
the 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 beatnik uh surfer scene uh you know heavy harpsichord kind of it's a little difficult for me to put my finger on the pulse of um you know, I, I've seen it in Looney Tunes and Tom and Jerry cartoons where uh, the the opening intro changed and it's a it's more uh, you know hip and eh. and Voodoo had that element to it and honestly it it just rubs me the wrong way and I think you know even without that it went on too long so I wish there was more Creeping Vine a little less Voodoo and um, next is uh, Disembodied Hand which is my favorite segment, and it's very good in its simplicity and its message and its execution. Um, so, I, But when I give these scores, I'm going to do it for the entirety of the movie. So if one's really high, but the other one's kind of low, it's going to balance themselves out. And the last segment is uh, Vampire? Uh, vampire, yes. And this one was interesting in that it gave a twist to it, but it's not one that I saw coming only because I actually was predicting a different one, and I was kind of all in on that with, with my, uh, you know, where I thought things were going. Uh, overall, as far as the plots, balancing all of them out, I thought that they were actually pretty decent. Uh, the portion that I had trouble with the most was actually, uh, besides Voodoo, was the binding story, them on the train. And for reasons that I can't really get into here, I don't, it'll give spoilers. Uh, but overall, I gave the plot 14 out of 20 points. The intent, uh, I had to give 9 out of 20. And the reason for that is because uh, the fear quotient, which is the last category you're going to see, is suffering. And that ultimately, it's just not a terribly scary movie. And that's a tough thing for me to judge. Uh, because it was a different era. And to date, this is the oldest movie that I have reviewed on Rotted. And that's going to change very quickly. This is not going to hold that crown for very long because this coming weekend, I'm going to be doing a movie from, I think, 1911. And then pff, no no other movie is going to hold that crown. Um, but regardless, this is from a different era. It did has, have a different societal uh, sensitivity to it. So, you know, you're not going to be able to get you know, a Saw movie or a Sinister movie or a Insidious movie that was back in the 1960s. It's it, the MPA would never have allowed it. There's uh, all sorts of standards and, you know, guidelines, you know, and I, I think it was just a different era of filmmaking. But, you know, this movie was very clearly trying for kind of a Twilight Zone-esque scary cautionary tale storyline well series of storylines and the scary part i think just really didn't happen a whole lot and as far as the cautionary tale portions some of them were and were pretty solid in that regard i think uh, the disembodied hand one was the best of the bunch as far as that goes um and then some of them were just kind of fell flat and just were and uh, as much as I wanted to see more of it, I think that uh, what was it the Creeping Vine segment uh, fell into that category. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, uh, 9 out of 20 for that. Now, the acting. <laughs> what can I say about the acting? Uh, 14 out of 20 for that. The actors themselves were phenomenal. And what else could we expect from a cast like that? Uh, unfortunately, you could also tell that they were basically earning a paycheck. You know, Donald Sutherland was pretty much starting out and, you know, cashing in and going home. So as good as the performances were, they certainly weren't any of the individual actors best. Uh, Christopher Lee did a great job of being the skeptic and he, he really, you know, took it to the nth level with that and, you know, you could tell that there was a sense of fun about things, but it, when you have that level of fun, then you also have uh, actors that aren't giving their entirety to a, what ultimately needs to be a serious performance. Uh, it's a little difficult to weigh there. So uh, 14 out of 20 because <laughs> solid cast and they did an admirable job, but I just can't give it any higher than that. Technical is, again, just like the fear thing, something that I have to 
situate myself in the the setting of the era, but at the same time, I don't want to give too much quarter to things like that. It, it feels wrong that you know I, I can give allowances, but I can't forgive glaring errors. Uh, the technical is actually a portion where taking into account the era and taking into account the lack of errors on a technical level, I thought it was really good and it held up and it's, I gave it a 15 out of 20 for that. Uh, the disembodied hand segment, I was just as thrilled with that watching the entirety of the movie as I was watching just the segments in the creepy class and Vincent Price uh, moments there. Uh, other elements of it, uh, the creeping vine worked well. Voodoo, there really wasn't a whole lot there. Uh, werewolf was more psychological and what you don't see. I can't give it any higher than 15, and the reason for that is because of Vampire. Everything else about the movie, on a technical level, sold me. But Vampire, I don't think I've ever seen a clear representation of a rubber bat floating <laughs> against a fishing line in my entire life. That really drug it down and probably knocked a couple points off the technical category there. It was difficult to watch without laughing. Um, and as far as the fear quotient goes, uh, I already kind of covered that and covered why. Uh, three out of 20 for that. I really, it just wasn't scary. It was entertaining. It was interesting. It was fun. It wasn't scary. So uh, that gives us a total score of 55 points for Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. I'm going to be getting into what I had issues with with the binding segment of them on the train, as well as some thoughts about uh, some personal, some of the individual segments there in the deep dive discussion, but that's going to be full of spoilers, so caution there if you haven't seen the movie yet. Uh, that should about do it for this episode of Rotted. And in the meantime, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.